Hi everyone, so this is the first time I've ever filmed a real-time tutorial and this is the first time I've actually filmed anything in a long time so I'm really nervous to start this but anyway, so just ignore me if I ramble on or it's not the best but I will, I'm gonna just go for it anyway you can never get better at it if you don't try so today I'm doing a, um, a tutorial on how to draw a dog's eye in graphite so I picked out this reference photo which I will link um, it's a free photo that anyone can use, it's just on the tablet in front of me so I can see. And um, yeah, anyone can use the photo. So I'll link it below in the description so that you can follow along with this tutorial as well. Um, and I'm gonna be using graphite because it's a bit more simpler to explain. I thought it was a good starting point. So the things that I'm using, I'm using the Fabriano um, paper, let me just, get it out for you. This paper, this is the paper I'm using and this is just a small 5 by 7 inch sheet just because it's obviously a small piece. I'm using that and then I've stuck it down onto a drawing board with this low tech artist tape, scotch tape. It does keep coming unstuck but at least it doesn't peel the paper when you like tear the paper when you peel it off. Anyway, and I'm using these graphite pencils that any graphite pencils will do, just with um, some various different types, some different hardnesses and that kind of thing. So those are what I'm using. And the sharpener I'm using is this Derwent sharpener, but you can use literally any sharpener. Um, and I also, I use a black coloured pencil just to deepen up all the darkest points because I find that graphite you can't always get dark enough um, and if you press too hard sometimes it goes quite shiny so I thought I'd use this which is usually what I've used and then I've got some blending stumps just to blend out the graphite or to create like a base or whatever and there's also a couple of rubbers that I use um, I needed a razor which is good for just dabbing on where you want it and you can kind of lead it to the shape you want as well so these are really handy I recommend this it's a Faber-Castell one and then also I use this Tombow mono eraser which is just a really thin rubber like this and you can buy refills that go in here so yeah it's really handy and then the final thing I think this is the last thing is this is a thread unpicker and I can't get it out there we go which um, you use it for sewing, but I use it to emboss the paper, I find because it's got a really thin tip. So I use that, but you can also use these, which is an embossing tool. Um, but I find sometimes the tip is still a little bit too thick. So that's why I use this. So the first thing I've done, I just sketched out the basic outline of the eye. And also the reference photo was in colour, so what I just did, I just edited it quickly on my computer, it's super easy to do. Just press edit photo at the top or edit button at the top of your photos and change it to black and white. I find that when you're working in black and white, it's just easier to look at a reference photo when it's in black and white. It's just easier to interpret, I guess. It's just easier to see where the darker and the lighter parts are. So, yeah. I'm going to start off now by kind of mapping out the darkest areas. So like around the pupil, I'm just using a 6B pencil for this, but I'm not pressing hard. I'm just pressing very lightly. Of course, this was actually a bit wobbly, so hopefully the camera footage won't be too wobbly. But so I know I've got a customer coming soon, so I'll probably have to stop this like really abruptly at one point. But yeah, I can just edit that out, hopefully. So I'm just kind of mapping out the darkest areas. This is usually what I do to start with. I map out kind of where the darkest and the lightest areas are, just so I can kind of see that straight away. Um, just find that kind of helps. A slightly lighter area here in the pupil, so I'm not gonna map that out as dark. So that is the pupil, and then around the edge, there's also some darker areas, but around the pupil, on the coloured part of the eye. 
I'm just gonna roughly put those in as well. I've recently just um, moved into my own flat with my boyfriend. Um, so I'm getting into filming again now. So for the past six months, I've been in the process of buying a flat. And it had just been a nightmare. I couldn't really get into a routine because I didn't know what was going to be happening when. And I just felt like I had no routine. And I couldn't, I just couldn't get into filming properly. And the room I was working in was a mess and I was just really disorganised. So I thought, right, I'll stop filming again once I've moved out. And then I can get a proper routine going and hopefully put a video out every single week, which is what I'm hoping to do. Um, feel free to skip ahead at any point during this tutorial. Because um, obviously you don't need to watch every single little part of it. But because I'm working along with you, or you can just draw alongside me and keep the video going, which might be quite nice. Depends if you want to hear my voice, or you can just put me on mute. It's completely up to you. I'm recording the audio on my camera, my microphone, and my iPhone. So I'm recording the audio on three different ways because I'm not sure how this is going to turn out. Because my camera, the audio on my camera is never that good. Um, and the microphone, it does tend to pick up my laptop noise because I have to plug the microphone in my laptop and it's sometimes quite hard to edit out. And then my phone, I think, has the best kind of audio recording. So we're going to see if that sounds best. But at some point, I'm definitely going to invest in a another microphone like a really decent one but can't really afford it at the moment so this will have to make do for now it feels really hard to talk and draw at the same time i'm not used to doing this normally i'd listen to a podcast or netflix or youtube in the background and i kind of be in my own little world i don't have to talk and think about what i'm saying so I probably will just ramble on about rubbish. So, well, don't ignore me, but just ignore any rambling. I apologise. I'm sure I'll get better at this as I, the more I do it. So as I said, the more you do things, the better you're going to get. You're not going to get better if you don't just try it and do it. And I rub it here, which should be a bit lighter. This is where this rub is really handy because you can be really precise with it. So I definitely recommend getting one of those. I think I just got it off eBay and it came with some refills. And I'm still actually on the first refill, I think. I don't think I've actually used any of the refills yet. So it lasts ages. Even though most of the time I don't draw um, in graphite, most of the time I use pastels, but sometimes I use graphite for some commissions or if I just fancy using something different. So I feel like when I use pastels for like for ages, I tend to want to use another medium for a while. So it's sometimes nice to just go back and use something different for a while. I also want to experiment with watercolours as well at some point and create some like a bit more unrealistic art, like a bit more unpredictable kind of art as well, just on the side. Like I love drawing realistically, but Sometimes it's nice to just branch out and do something for yourself rather than a commission or something that has to be super perfect. But that's the beauty of art, you can just kind of do whatever you want. There's no limits. I'm still just kind of mapping out the dark areas at the moment. Still not pressing too hard, because I usually go in later on to sort of mapping the areas out at the moment. There's some dark bits at the top here as well. The thing is when drawing dog's eyes or cat's eyes or any eye basically, they're all slightly different and they've all got different reflections going on. And 
yeah, they all look different and depending on the breed of the dog or the cat. Or whatever, or even human eyes are different. No one's eyes are the same. They are my favourite thing to draw because it kind of brings the drawing to life. And I like all the different reflections you can do. Create. Just makes it look more realistic. Apologise if I go silent for a little while, I'm just concentrating and don't always know what to say the whole time. At some point soon I'm going to do a updated art room tour because my art room's completely changed now obviously since I've moved and it's nearly finished really, I've just got to buy a shelf to go on the wall so I can put my varnishes and things like that on so they're out of the way. Um, but other than that, I'm quite organised now actually. It's really nice and cosy in here. The only problem is it's quite echoey so the voiceover might be quite echoey but I'll try and edit it a little bit if I can and make it sound a bit better. Even though I'm not really great with technology but I can learn, I can try, do what I can. Kind of learn as you go along, don't you? Right, so I go through and kind of start to press a little bit harder. So usually when I'm drawing eyes or something, I'll do the actual eyeball itself and then I'll go onto the fur around the eye afterwards. But I like to get the actual eye pretty much done first. Just so it feels like more complete before you start doing the fur. Trying to press a little bit harder on it to, to um, what's the word, to like make the people stand out so you know you can define it a bit more. Um, when working in graphite, if there's an area which is pure white, like the highlight in this eye, I tend to not put any colour in it if I can help it, because even if you put a little bit of graphite on it by accident, sometimes you can't always rub it out to be pure, pure white um, again, so I try and avoid that as much as possible. So that, so I, think, I will darken it up even more, obviously, because it's still not super dark, but I will go in with the colour pencil a bit later. So for all this bit, instead of scribbling in the whole of it, I kind of use the blending stump. It's basically just a paper kind of stump thing. You can get these off eBay or anywhere, any art store. Um, they're really cheap. And... I just smudge it all out to create a base around the edge. It just quickens the process up a little bit and makes the paper a little bit less grainy as well. You can get all sizes, all different sizes of these blending stumps as well. So I get them in packs of various sizes. So I've got these little thin ones as well for more detailed areas. Um, this white bit here as well of the eye, I will add some colour to that, not colour, but add some tone to that because it's not pure white. Okay, I've got this line here, so I'm just putting that in. like I'm working a lot slower than usual. I think it's because I'm conscious of what I'm doing. But as I said, I'm sure I'll get better at this when I the more I do it. Hopefully I'll end up actually uploading this and not chickening out. Because I know what I'm like. 
I'll watch it back and I'll be like, no, I can't upload that. But hopefully I will. I need to do it. I need to just put myself out there and be brave. Okay, now I'm just darkening up the area around the eye again. Well, around the pupil, sorry, not around the eye. Just kind of doing, it doesn't have to be exactly like the reference photos. I mean, if you kind of get the rough, like roughly the same, you won't notice too much unless you're going for absolute identical, um, which you might want to do, but I don't tend to get my um, drawings completely identical. As long as you get the values right, it should look pretty realistic as long as the shapes and the values are right. And the values are like how light and dark an area is, which is when you're using graphite, you can really see the values clearly because it's black and white. Whereas when you work in colour, it's a little bit harder to see which areas are darker than others sometimes. So if you're a beginner with drawing, I'd recommend using graphite first or charcoal or something that's black and white, or even just black and white coloured pencils, or black and white pastels, whatever, just to get used to working in different tones and practice getting your values right. This area up here is really dark. So I will deepen it up a lot more. But I do it gradually. Just take your time with it. As I said, I do normally work a bit faster than this, but because I'm kind of conscious that I'm recording and talking at the same time, it takes a bit longer. Oh, I wish my customer would hurry up because I'm conscious also that I've got to answer the door at some point and quickly stop the filming. It's making me feel like, I don't know, like something's bugging me at the back of my mind, but I'm sure she'll come soon. Still just using the 6B pencil. I haven't used any other pencils at the moment. I will do when it comes to some of the lighter areas in that, but for now, I'm just using this and adding darker bits. I don't want my worst part to draw. Of the dog is and maybe sometimes I find the nose quite difficult but I'd probably say the mouth or like teeth I find that quite difficult sometimes especially if the photo is not super clear and you have to kind of use your imagination a little bit quite difficult I'm going to pause this in a minute and just make sure that the audio is all okay. Even I'm not going to fully be able to tell until I start putting it all together. Hopefully this will go to plan, but <laughs> oh. my filming setup's not amazing because I don't have the equipment. What I've got is kind of a cheap setup, but I'll gradually upgrade it as I go. Desk keeps knocking. I don't know what's knocking on. It's 
bit better. I think it was knocking on the wall on the other side. The desk is a little bit wobbly. I feel like my hand's covering the drawing quite a bit. I'm sorry about that if that's the case. In a minute I'm going to do the white bits at the side I think and then I'm going to use the coloured pencil to really darken up some areas because I feel like my pupil just looks pathetic at the moment, really needs darkening up. So for this bit here it's quite dark still so I'm just going to use the blending stump just to drag some of the graphite into it like that. This is quite dark, it's not white. It's just lighter than the rest of it, so I think that's okay. Then I'm gonna use the thin blending stump for this part. I'm just gonna blend around the edge. Needs to be a bit more level ground. Like that. And then I'll just smush that out a little bit. And just do a little bit. Try not to press hard. Just to get a little bit of tone in there. And if you do accidentally darken it up too much, just use the rubber or this, or you could use a normal rubber, I guess, but it's just easier to get a bit more precise with this one. Got quite a thin line up the top there. And then it gets a bit darker down here. And then there's also a white line along here. So I'm just going to put that in with the rubber. Like that. Kind of like that. Pick a little bit of it up with this. And then yeah, this pupil I'm going to really deepen up now with this coloured pencil. And this is the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencil in black. And that's just my favourite one to use because you can get it really sharp and precise. So it's the coloured pencil I tend to always use when I'm working with graphite, just alongside it. I know there are some graphite pencils you can buy. I can't remember what brand they're by or what they're called, but... They, you can get them really, really black. I definitely need to get some, but I honestly cannot remember what brand they are. I have to do some giggling. Okay, pupils kind of getting darker now. There's a slightly lighter section up here, so I'm going to darken that bit as much. Still dark in the way. Yeah. You'll never get it quite as black as the reference photo I use in those. Just moving, you'd have to use something like pastels or something to get it super, super, super black. Or a marker. You could even use a marker, some people do. Or, yeah, something else, some kind of pen or something, you'd get something pitch pitch black. But I've never tried that, so I just stick with this.
I'm just going to go with some big dark bits around the pupil with this colour pencil. But it's slowly starting to come a bit more to life. It does take a while usually and then when you've done the finishing touches it's like, oh, this actually looks like a realistic eye now. But at first it kind of looks a bit rubbish. It's always the case though. You have to push through your glue stages. This line underneath here is also very, very dark. Sometimes it's helpful to print out the reference photo onto some paper and put that next to your drawing as you're going. And then you can see literally directly next to it what needs changing and you can compare it side by side. But I tend to either have a picture up on my laptop or on my phone or a tablet or something. Saves on printing ink, I guess. And you just keep darkening up areas until you think they're dark enough and you can always darken them up again a bit later which quite often you feel like I feel like I need to sometimes towards the end and then darken some bits up a little bit more but for now just kind of get it as dark as you think it needs to be and you can always come back and darken it later This tutorial might have to be into two parts because otherwise it's going to be super long. I'm not sure my laptop will like me editing really long videos, so I might have to borrow my boyfriend's computer because yeah, that would probably work better than my laptop. Right, still feel like I need to darken up some of the iris, but I'll come back to that later. Darken up little bits of it, and then I can come back to it. These blending stumps are good to get rid of a little bit of the graininess, graininess sometimes. I'm happy with that for now. And then what I tend to do, I'm going to use the 4B. I'm trying to think what's the best way to do this. This is quite a lot of white hairs. So I might use the um, brown picker to go over some of the light hairs in a minute, but I'll show you that when I do it. So for now I'm just going to add a little bit of dark to map up some of the darker areas around the eye. I don't always draw eyes in the exact same order. 
Um, just depends how I'm feeling at the time and what I think would make more sense to me. But when I'm drawing an animal, I usually do always start with the eyes in general because yeah, it just brings the animal to life straight away. Good thing of graphite is it's quite easy to rub out as well if you do make a mistake, whereas if you're using coloured pencils or something, it's quite hard to rub out any of your mistakes. Obviously, if you press really hard with graphite, you're not going to be able to get that up completely, but you can get up, you can erase more of it than you can with coloured pencil. Not that I really use coloured pencils anymore, I tend to use pastels, but you can't fully erase pastels either. It's the same kind of thing. Oh, sorry if you hear me gurgling. I get these weird throat gurgles after I've eaten, and because I not long had lunch, I keep gurgling. That's really embarrassing, I'm hoping it doesn't pick up on the audio. <laughs> So to stop it in the next my camera only records for half an hour at a time so just like it just stopped on me Well, my stomach's making noises. <sighs> the section under the eye is quite dark. These hairs here at the front, which is around the nose, um, they're quite white and wiry, so I am going to use this. I'll get the lid off again. God, that's stiff. Put that on too tight, I think. I don't want to break my nail. Ah, oh, there we go. Got it. So, where some of the hairs are, I'm just going to drag it over the paper and press relatively hard but not too hard that you're gonna cut the paper as i said you can use one of these instead which i've seen a lot of other artists use um or you could use like a needle even or just something small and sharp and pointy i'm just adding in a few white bits here so that basically when you go over it in the graphite the colour won't go into these indentations which is quite an easy way of getting pure white little lines so they're good for like whiskers and yeah and fine kind of hairs like this And then I will probably use it up the top as well, but I'm going to leave it at that for now. There we go, you can see there it's kind of avoiding, the graphite avoids going into those dips. It's really handy. Usually when working in graphite, I tend to rest my hand on some glassing paper, or you could use a just a plain blank piece of paper under your hand just so you don't smudge 
your drawing as you go, which is usually what I would do, but for the sake of the video, because it would get in the way and cover up part of the drawing for you guys. So I won't be doing that. I'll just try not to smudge it as best I can. I'm not sure if I'm going to completely go up to the lines around the edge, but just did that so that the paper doesn't move throughout the video. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to add in a few lines up here as well, where these light hairs are, just so there's a few kind of defined white lines. just easier than leaving all of the bits of paper blank that you want to be white otherwise it can take quite a long time be a bit tedious add some along here as well oh god moving moving the board Um, this side as well because it goes into a dark bit of fur just to define some of the white bits a bit more cool it should be okay here is quite dark underneath where this white bit is I probably should have put in some more white strands than I have but I'm going to just leave it for now quite dark lines I'm going to try and upload a video once a week, which my upload day was always a Sunday at 4pm, so I'll probably just continue with that again. Um, and then if I happen to have more videos, I can just upload them as extras. Just kind of get into the routine. I mean, after that, if I can upload more often, then I will, but for now, keep it up one a week. I'm going to overwhelm myself. Otherwise I know what will happen. I'll get behind and then just give it up again, which I don't want to do. I want to stay consistent this time. If you don't want to shade in a whole area, again, you could just use the blending stump to create a base, which is always handy. Just saves a bit of time. What time is it? Maybe three, okay. I'll get my filming done before my boyfriend gets home. I feel more conscious when you're talking on camera with someone else in the play in the house. So tend to prefer to do it when I'm home alone. You don't have to worry about anyone hearing you, even though I'm sure if someone stood outside the window they could hear me, but who cares? So at the moment I'm working from home three days a week, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. And in those days I get all my Etsy orders done. And up to date I do 
one pet portrait a week and then hopefully one video a week. So I can have like an Etsy order day, a pet portrait day and a filming and editing day. I think that should work out okay. I mean eventually I want to be doing this full time but mm, don't know when yet. We'll see how it goes. I'm hoping by the end of the year. I'll be doing this full time and then I'll have more time to focus on everything. But we will see. I'm just going focusing on the darker bits of fur again, which is usually what I always do first. I focus on the darker areas. And then I focus on the lighter areas afterwards. I just find that's the most like logical, I guess, way to put to work. I just find that's just the easiest for me, really. Not really entirely sure why. You can work in any order you like. With art, there's no right or wrong, so you can just do whatever you want. If you do follow along with this tutorial, that sounded really stupid. But yeah, if you follow along with this tutorial, please do send me a picture of your artwork. I'd be really interested to see and see who's actually followed along. It'd just be nice to see. Or if you have any questions or anything like that, please do feel free to message me and I'll do my best to get back to you as quickly as I can. will darken up around the eye a bit more. I feel like, because I've got the camera here, I feel like on the camera it looks lighter than it does in real life. In person, it looks darker. I'll zoom in a bit towards the end. It might be because I've got quite bright lights on. So I'll have to figure out what light settings is best for me to have on my light um, lamps that I use for filming. Maybe play around with them. Because my drawing definitely looks like darker in person than it does in the preview screen. So just bear that in mind. Also, I'll show you at the end what it actually looks like. Give you a clearer view. When working realistically, it's really important to get your darks dark enough and keep your lights light enough. So that's what makes a portrait or drawing or whatever look more realistic is the values and the contrast. This is actually taking a lot longer than I thought it would. I thought this would be a really quick like oh yeah one hour tutorial done but no I think this is going to end up being um, two parts so like an hour and a half, two hours long, but we'll see. If it ends up only being an hour, then it'll be just one video. And then, yeah, there's dark fur again behind this bit on the eye, um, from the eye, on the top here. And if you do think you've maybe gone too dark, you can always just use this rubber. I just feel like maybe I've gone a bit too far over, but we'll see. I'll we'll zoom in a little bit more. Oh, I should have done that to start with. This pencil's getting really short. <laughs> Need to use an extender or something. I do have some, I just can't remember where I've put them since I moved.
lighter fur is a lot quicker to draw than darker fur if you're using graphite. You don't need as many layers and you don't need to darken it quite so much. So you have to add in quite a lot of layers to get it looking dark enough. slightly the wrong direction. So always pay attention to the direction the fur goes in because I just realised I'd kind of done it slightly wrong direction up there a minute ago. So I'll just rub that out. Especially around an eye, the fur changes direction loads. So at the top here it goes up and round, round the eye, and at the bottom it goes round like this. So around eyes and, and around noses and mouths, that's where the fur direction tends to change quite a lot. I might do a few more graphite studies for you guys. So maybe I could do like a nose and a mouth as well. Maybe like a cat nose and a dog's nose because they're quite different. That might be something you find, would find helpful. I don't know. If you have any suggestions, just let me know in the comments. It really helps to know what you guys find helpful as well. My phone keeps lighting up. I'm recording the audio on my phone, but it keeps like randomly light the screen lighting up and then going dim again. I don't know why. You can see it out the corner of my eye. When you do use the blending stumps, try not to blend over the areas that you've done these lines on because it can then sometimes push the graphite into these lines, which would get rid of those lines that you've just put in. Or at least make them less bold, so you don't really want to do that. Unless that is your goal, but not in this case. Okay, I'm actually going to reach for the HB pencil for the first time in this whole drawing. Um, I'm going to use that here to create some lighter bits of fur. My costume still isn't coming yet, it's been about an hour. Or have I just come? But I guess I've not got too much left of this, I suppose. I've just got the fur and darken up some areas and that, so. some you know, darker lines in between and you could also go in with the coloured pencil even and create a few darker strands which looks quite nice It's 
bit here I feel that needs to be darker so I'm just going to darken that up while I notice it. Last bit here, like there. Sorry if you can hear my neighbour, they're just talking outside the window. <laughs> Definitely recommend using a coloured pencil, black coloured pencil within your graphite drawings though. Definitely makes a difference. Just be darkening up areas. It doesn't matter if you go onto the tape because I'm going to peel that off at the end anyway. some lighter strands amongst this white bit because there's quite a lot of dark strands amongst the white bit of fur here Because I'm recording the audio separately to my camera, I feel like it'd be quite hard to match the audio up to the sound so that the pencil strokes match up with the sound, if that makes sense. So the sound's not all out of sync, but I'm sure I can do it. It might be a little bit tedious. Sort of reveal some of those white strands I put in up here. Okay, and then the fur here in this corner very very faint so I'm just going to add in a few kind of faint lines there's not a huge amount of detail you can see up here just go with some faint light hand strokes hand strokes pencil strokes I think that's what I meant hand strokes. Doesn't need to be perfect. 
the main focus of this tutorial is the actual eye itself, but I'm just sort of doing some of the fur around the eyes to show you the like direction, the fur direction and things like that. So if you're doing a whole portrait, you'd obviously need to know how to do that. There we go, some white fur. I think I need to add a bit more, more dark strands here. Pause the recording again in a minute. It's nearly reached half an hour again. How has the time gone so quickly? I have no idea. Time flies when you're having fun. It's not actually felt as awkward as I thought I was going to, filming myself talking while drawing. I thought I was going to find it a lot harder. And I still find it very strange. It would take a lot of getting used to, but it's not as weird as I thought it would feel, which is a good thing. A few more darker strands at this end here as well. And then back down here. A few darker strands just sort of along here. It goes lighter and then it goes a little bit darker again. I'm just using the 4B again, this little, little pencil. And the fur, you can see here, it's kind of curving around underneath the eye. So always pay attention to that. It gets a bit darker as you get towards this bit here, which is towards the nose, because the dog's nose will be kind of down here. It gets darker, the fur gets darker, so I'm just adding more dark as I go along. Peeling the tape off at the end is always my favourite part. It's just really satisfying. <laughs> Not my favourite part, but it's just really satisfying. It's nice to see how crisp and clean the edges look when you peel it off. It just looks a bit more professional and neater. I don't always do that with my portraits. It depends what I'm drawing and what the composition's like, but I tend to do it with most of them. Just because it gives it a nice and neat edge. Usually I use, um, it's called Scotch Magic Tape, but for this I've just used the low-tack, Scotch low-tack artist tape, which does the job anyway. It just doesn't stick that well, which I guess is the point because it's called low-tack, so it's, I guess it's designed not to rip the paper underneath, which is a good thing, obviously. Okay, I've been avoiding this area. This area here is all very, very dark. So I'm going to work on this little section here now, darken that up.
when doing fur and things, try and keep your pencil as sharp as possible. I've not actually sharpened mine this whole time. I haven't felt like I've needed to, but if they do start getting blunt, just give them a little sharp and it helps. Because like fur is obviously loads of really thin strands. If it gets too thick, it might not work as well. And I think that's more important when you're working on a smaller scale because you don't want the lines to be too thick or it might look a bit silly. Because I'm working on quite a large scale for this one. Don't need to sharpen them as much. Okay, my boyfriend will be home soon, so I'm going to try and get this done before he gets back. Yeah, he should be back in probably about half an hour, so got a bit of time. I'm sure eventually I'll be able to film with him in the house. It's just because I've just started getting back into it again, I kind of just don't want to <laughs> feel self-conscious. I know he wouldn't judge me, but even so. Oh my throat, it's like making all sorts of noises. Please let me know if your throat does that as well, like after you've eaten and stuff. My throat just goes like, rrr, call it like frog noises. It's really embarrassing. I used to hate it at school when it was quiet and my throat would do it and obviously everyone stares at you. It's horrible. It's really embarrassing. I can't help it, but you know, I think it's some like digestive issues or something. I don't know. I think it's where I can't burp very much. A bit too much information, but I think it's where the gas builds up and it like moves around in my throat. That sounds disgusting, I know. I've got the basic idea in here. I just need to darken up this area here quite a bit and then work on this area here. So, all this fur here is quite um, dark. I'm going to edit this video next week, so hopefully I'll be able to upload this in like a week's time maybe should be good because I haven't uploaded in ages and I'm just quite excited to upload again. Right, there's a few really dark strands here or fur by the eye. I'm just adding those in. Like this. Oh, coming together now. Just adding a little bit of strand, fur strands here. As I said, I'm just sort of roughly doing the fur around the face. I'm not going into a huge amount of detail because I want the focus to be on the actual main eye. This evening I'm going to Tesco's do my food shop. How exciting. I actually quite enjoy doing food shopping, not gonna lie. And then I'm just probably just gonna chill, read, maybe watch something on TV. Don't know, just have a chill evening tonight after I've been to Tesco's. What do you like to do with your evenings? I tend to 
prefer to just relax in the evenings. I don't work in the evenings or anything because I feel like I need some downtime, otherwise I just don't sleep. I, have, I sometimes work in the evenings, but quite rarely because I know it's just not good for me. It's not good for my sleep. It's already done, I think. I'm just gonna darken it around here. So yeah, on the camera viewfinder, this bit here definitely doesn't look as dark as it does in real life, which is a bit strange. But I'll show you properly when I've darkened up a little bit more. So just keep going over areas that you think need darkening up and if you think any areas need lighting that you can just use this to dab on it to lighten the areas up or just any eraser really but the needed erasers um i think work better I feel like the iris needs to be a little bit darker. And quite often when I'm drawing, I'll come back to it the next day and I'll notice, oh, maybe that bit here needs to be a bit darker or maybe I need to change this. So sometimes it's good to come back and look on it with fresh eyes. I've left the highlight in the middle completely white just because that's what it looks like to me in the reference photo. It looks completely white, so I'm going to keep it completely right. White, not right. Why can't I talk properly sometimes? <laughs> There we go, now it looks darker. There we go, now it looks darker. Why didn't I do that all along? Now it looks more like it does in real life. Oh, it's this light. I'll have to remember that. Oh, well, never mind. I'll remember that for next time. And then. Yep, peeling off the tape is my favourite part. See, look how clean and satisfying that looks. You can't tell me that is not satisfying to you. <laughs> okay, and there we go. Let me zoom back out a little bit. Ooh. Ah. Okay, zooming out. There's the drawing. Is the reference photo again. There we go. You can kind of see when I tilt it that way that it's actually darker. Oh, it's really annoying about that lighting. I should have tried that at the beginning, but anyway, I will do that next time. Just got to play around with the lighting, I guess, until you get something that works. So, yeah, anyway, thank you so much if you've watched the video, and I hope you enjoyed it, even though the lighting, as I found, wasn't perfect. But I've tried, and at least I'll know next time change my lighting a little bit. Um, if you have followed along with the tutorial at all, please let me know, send me a photo of your drawing. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Oh, and the picture is linked in the description below, just, yeah. And I'll link down the, um, quite a lot of the 
supplies I've used as well. I'll try and link those as well, just in case you're interested. So yeah, anyway, bye for now.